The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, by the hand of Moses, your servant, you led your people out of slavery and made them free at last. Grant that your church, following the example of your prophet Martin Luther King, may resist oppression in the name of your love and may strive to secure for all your children the blessed liberty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 to 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. 
You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know from where it came, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
It's a genuine Episcopal emergency in Cana of Galilee. There is a big wedding and no telling how many people are going to show up. This is every host's worst nightmare. And then it happens. Luckily for the hosting family, Jesus' mother Mary is the first responder. And through effective intercession and special use of her mom powers, which all moms have, by the way, Jesus gets involved in the situation. Jesus is initially reluctant, maybe because he is just starting out his ministry and he doesn't yet see the ministry opportunity here. But then his mom asked him to help. He has to do something because this situation needs Jesus. He sees six empty jars used for the ritual purification and he asks that they be filled with water, which then becomes a vast quantity of amazing, highly valued wine of excellent quality. But Jesus is doing something more than making fancy wine here. The wine is only the presenting issue. What Jesus is really doing is saving the hosting family from shame and degradation. Because if the wine gives out, the family will be outcasts. There is a lot at stake here because wine was really one of the only safe drinks in biblical times. Jesus' wedding gift that day is really dignity. Even though the wine ran out long ago, the, it is the God-given dignity that Jesus gave to the people assembled at that wedding feast that day that is the true vintage that keeps pouring from generation to generation. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whom we remembered this weekend, once said that dignity is unable to accept hunger and thirst in the world. It is that God-given dignity that Jesus brought to the wedding at Cana. It is the God-given dignity that Dr. King advocated for his entire working life. Friends, recall the water of our baptism in which we promise to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Claiming this dignity, offering this dignity is basic to the call of every Christian. And so we must continue to strive for that dignity with God's help. Amen. Amen.
The Prayers of the People With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. John and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Dear people of God, let us go forth rejoicing in the arrival of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord, bringing us out of darkness and into his light. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.